Hello everyone. I'm glad you could join me today. I'm Susan Malloy of Silver Lady Stamping. I am coming on today because I wanted to show you two cards that I made <clears throat> using the memories and more cards and envelopes that are in the catalog. This is actually a video that I meant to post several days ago, you know, last week probably. Um, and I never did uh, get around to it. So I am a consummate procrastinator and always there's something always that's gonna get in the way of me doing a video. I've always been that way. I gotta get over that. Um, so here I am at my kitchen table and this is my crafting space. So any, any of you that are lucky enough to have a dedicated room for your uh, crafting, you're so lucky. I live in a very small uh, space and I don't have uh, an extra room to use as my crafting. So I do kitchen table crafting. And do I eat my dinner here? Uh, no, I don't. I eat in the living room. I uh, watch a little TV and that's where I eat my dinner. And it works just fine. Um, so my, but I do try to keep my kitchen table somewhat less cluttered. I don't want to say uncluttered because you know, that ain't possible. I'm going to, I try to keep it a little under control because you know how that can be. You got your ink, you got your papers, everything starts piling on. You got ideas for, for cards and you pull out like five different stamp sets and all of a sudden everything is everywhere. So. Oh, I try to just keep it somewhat under control. Um, all right, so I'm gonna just show you, uh, I'm gonna switch the camera down so that you can see the cards. So these are two cards, two different cards that I made using the Memories and More cards and envelopes. And honestly, I, think that these are an overlooked item in the catalog. I mean, and maybe even if you saw it, you forgot about them. You get 20, and I'll show you what the, so this is what you get. You get, uh, it's a card with pre-printed um, design on it, and you get 20 cards and 20 envelopes, and the envelopes are kind of pre-printed, and they have the, um, let me turn it this way, the design from the hand pen designer series paper. And so you get 20 cards, 20 envelopes for $10. I mean, you can't really beat that, right? $10. So you're getting these for like 50 cents a pair. It's just such an awesome deal, I think, especially if you're, if you're somebody that's just getting started with paper crafting. The supplies can add up so fast. You need paper, you need envelopes, you need, um, you know, designer series paper, you need all kinds of stuff, and it all adds up. So this is one way to help keep the costs a little bit under control. So again, you know, 20 cards, 20 envelopes. There's, and these are a little bit um, larger than the standard um, cards we usually make. I think it's like six, six, let me just get my ruler out. So this is like the whole, the card length is like six and a quarter and it's like, well, by four and a quarter. So usually it's five and a half, right? But this is six and a quarter. And the envelopes are the larger size so that the card will fit into it. So your standard envelope is gonna be too small to fit these cards. So you, you know, but in the, when you get the kit, it's the cards and the envelopes. Now, in addition, there's also another memories and more card kit right next to this one in the catalog. And it, it's a, it has, comes with a little bit more, uh, comes with a pack of stickers. I don't have it, so I can't show you, but I, I love it and I really want to order it. You get stickers and you can actually, especially if you're a beginner, you can use that card kit to practically make the entire card because 
Um, it comes with some cutout sentiments that are already pre-printed. You basically don't have to do anything. Um, so those are awesome, but those cards are smaller. They're more note card size. I forget the exact dimensions, but they're more note card size rather than this larger size. But I just encourage you to take a look at the catalog for the memories and more card kits because I think they're a great value. So I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to have, I'm going to try to show you both cards if I can get through them. Um, if not, then I'll just finish one and then do another, do a second video of the other one. So I'm going to start with the Easter card. And this one, um, it just, I thought it would just would go really, really well with, uh, you know, the stamp set Easter friends. Cause I just think it's just so cute, right? And Easter is coming up. So we're using the little chick right here and for the egg. Um, we're using, there's a, there's a punch in the catalog, double punch. Um, and we're only going to use this one, but keep this in mind because you can, you can use this for your sentiments and you know, you punch out this one and this one can be, uh, the under underneath layer of like a cardstock. And then this can be your white with the sentiment on it. it I've used them. It's so cute. So I don't know if um, it's never, you're never sure something's going to carry over to the new catalog. And even as a demonstrator, we don't know. So I would say if this is something that you like, you maybe want to order it now, just in case when uh, June rolls around and the new catalog comes out, it's not in there. Anyway, so this is one of the things we're going to use. Um, we're also going to use the uh, doilies, the heart and home uh, doilies, the heart and home doilies, and they come in, I think it's Misty Moonlight Cinnamon Cider and some kind of a green color. I don't know if it says it on the back. It doesn't naturally, um, but it doesn't matter whatever color they are because you can flip them over. So this one was gray. You can flip them over and you can color them any color you want. So as you can see on this one, I did Highland Heather. And then I also used, oh, where did I put them? Oh, here they are. I used the gem dots of iridescent rhinestones. Let me see if you can get that. Iridescent rhinestones. Oh, these are shimmery. I like that. So I just put them on the sentiment label. And then for the designer series paper, I used the hand penned, which kind of goes along with the you know, the envelope, it's not this, this one has orange in it, this has purple, but that's okay. Um, and then for the uh, butterfly, can you see the shimmery little butterfly at the top? Um, I use the shimmer paper and here we have, let me get it out of my envelope. Um, let's see if I can get it out. The shimmer paper comes in pink, I forget what the color of pink it is in this like pool party shimmer paper, which is so pretty. Um, you get like two sheets of either each one and they're really not, it's really nice. I love it. You're not, it's not something you would use like a whole sheet of it on a project. I'm being very frugal because I want it to last. And then I punched out butterfly using the butterfly brilliance dies. The butterfly, you know, these it's a butterfly brilliance stamp set and dies, but the dies themselves are called brilliant wings, as you can see. And then this is what they look like. So nice. All right, so that's what we're going to be using. Um, so what we can do is, all right, let me tell you the dimension. So the card base is already, you know, if you get using the, um, if you're using the Memories and More card kit, it's already done for you. Um, if not, then the dimensions are um, six and a quarter by four and four and a quarter, right? Didn't I say that, four and a quarter? Oops, wrong way. Yeah, four and a quarter. All right, and then we're gonna need a piece of designer series paper 
cut at five and a quarter by three and three quarters. And you're just gonna cut one. And then we're gonna need a small piece of basic white cut at two and a quarter by four, cut one. And then we're just gonna use um, a strip. Oh no, wait, yeah, so hold on. Uh, we're gonna need a piece for the inside cut at five and a quarter by four. And then also for the inside, you'll cut a piece of designer series paper at five and a quarter by one half. And then what I wanna do is just, you know, something like that. Okay. So we'll set the designer series paper aside. Um, we will, you know, we'll adhere it, but uh, not yet. I think what we'll do is take, all right, so two things. First of all, I did some coloring on this piece of white and this doily. Um, so, and I use my um, blending brushes. All right, so I'm gonna see how, mm, oh no, you know what I'm gonna use instead of soft succulent? I mean, instead of, I'm gonna use soft succulent instead of the old olive, because I used old olive for the, um, for the grass. I'm gonna use the soft succulent for the background. Okay, so we can move the doily out of the way. Let me move this over to the side. And I'm just gonna take my blending brush. These things are great. Um, they're in the catalog. They're fabulous. Now, when you're doing blending of any kind, whether you're using sponge daubers, a sponge, or the, the blending brushes, you want to start on off the paper um, and then swirl it onto the paper because otherwise you end up, you could end up with kind of a, you know, smudge on it and that's not something that you want. So we'll just, and you can layer the color, um, you know, when you put it on, you go back and you can make it as dark as you want. I don't want it to be too dark. I just really wanted to put some color on it. There we go. That's, as far as I'm concerned, that's that's good. Okay. That's where I want it. And then I'm gonna try to get another blending brush. Uh, I need more of them because I don't wanna, now you can get, you can rub it onto paper and get the color off if you wanna switch colors. And this one doesn't have, even though it looks like it has a lot of color on it, it doesn't. It has some, but not a lot. So I could technically switch colors using the same brush. But I, I need to get more because I wanna, I'd like to try to um, keep within the same color family or with the brush. So, all right, so this piece is done. Um, and now I want to switch over to the uh, doily. And what I'm going to do with the doily is the Highland Heather. So I'm going to do the same thing. Start off the paper and then swirl it onto the paper. Now, it does take a little while to get the coloring a little bit darker. So you're gonna to need to do this a few times. But that's all right. Just make it as light or as dark as you want. Okay. I think I'm gonna leave it just like that. Now, as you can see, I on the card, I really only used, I mean, only a part of it is showing. So I'm going to cut it in half. 
Now I could have done this ahead of time, but I wanted the purple color because I want to save it. All right, so I really only need half of it because we're gonna cover it. All right, so then um, I have already pre-cut the little butterfly using that shimmer paper because there's no need for you to, to have to watch me cut the butterfly. and. For the little uh, chick, I already pre-stamped and pre-cut the little chick. Now, there is no coordinating uh, die for it, so you are going to have to fussy cut it. If that's not your favorite thing, then um, don't be daunted by it because this is such a small image, it's not going to take you very long, and then you'll be done. Now, I have for the little egg... Um, the way I cut the um, the edges, the ridge, is I happen to have a pair of pinking shears that I use to cut across the middle of it. Um, now, if you don't have pinking shears, you can, I haven't tried it, but you could probably just take a pair of scissors and, you know, cut like, you know, and just cut it back and forth, I would think. Um, no need to run out and buy a pair of pinking shoes just for one to make one little egg. But I, I happen to have them, and so I'll just show you. Now, obviously, it's just easy. You just cut it. Oh, and I end up with a little egg. Okay. Here's my egg. So what I'm going to do now is stamp my grass. Uh, let's see, I need my block. Let's see if I can find one. Yep. Here's my block. And here's the grass. Uh, let's see, I'm going to use the old olive. And because I need it to go all the way across, I'm gonna to have to do it a couple of times. And there it is. Okay, doesn't have to be perfect, keep that in mind. It's all right. Okay. So now comes the assembly. <clears throat> um, let's see. So for this one, I popped it up on, I'll show you what I used, if I can get it. These are kind of awesome. These are the foam adhesive strips. Can you see that? Oh, these are great. So if you're popping something up on dimensionals, but you know, you get a lot of space to cover. Um, the problem is that you could end up using, you know, a lot of dimensionals. And the way to cut down on that is to use the, the foam strips, the foam adhesive strips. So you just peel them off. Okay, let me move that. Just lay it down. cut off. Oops, I need my snips. Just snip it off. Keep going. Okay, I think we need another piece. These have been really such a great Tool. Oop, I'm gonna need a. I'm gonna need a, need a little extra for the top. So I'm just gonna, that's it. You just cut the pieces that you need. And just put the rest back in the tray, and and you're good. Okay. Okay. Just one more side. Okay. 
And that's it. And you peel them off just the same way you would a dimensional. It just has the peel off back. Okay. All right. All right. We'll just put the put that right on top. I'm going to just glue down this piece. I'm just going to put the glue on the on the center piece because I don't want it oozing out, you know, around the edges where the lace part is. So I'm just going to place it on the on the left edge of the designer series paper Oop, to hold it in place. There we go, and. All right, then we have this piece, and I think I'll use a little bit more of the foam strips on this piece as well, since I have them out. Although if you don't have it, just use your dimensionals, right? Just use what you got. off. It was a little too long. Okay. Okay, we'll peel it. We'll peel the tape off again. just goes in the center. Okay. Now the little check, I'm going to put um, a few regular dimensionals on the back of the check. Just two. egg. I'm going to do the same thing. sort of at an angle. Okay, and then we'll put a little bit of liquid glue on the back of the butterfly. And the butterfly, I'm just going to tuck it underneath here a little bit. The top. Okay. Now, for the sentiment, let's see. Okay. The sentiment is, may your, let's see. May your days bloom with joy and happiness. Okay. 
It's this one right here. Make sure it fits. It does. Oop. Straighten that out. All right, and I'm going to use the, I'm going to get bring my Highland Heather back again and use that ink. trim it uh, with my scissors and then I'm going to just give it a flag which all you have to do is just cut a snip down the center and then snip it from one angle from one corner to the center and then from the other corner to the center that's how you just make a simple flag. Okay. And I'm just going to put a little liquid adhesive in the center. I'm not going to uh, pop it up. I think we have enough things popped up on it. Here we go. And then I will put a couple of uh, the gem dots on the sentiment label. One there, and then one on the other side. And there's the front. Nice. All right, so kind of simple. Now I will show you what I did on the inside. We don't have to go through the process, but on the inside, I put, you know, the, the piece of uh, white cardstock and the strip that we cut, I did that and then stamped it with Happy Easter. So that's the inside. Now, this is a pretty sturdy cardstock. You don't even have to add uh, another layer the way I did you can just stamp right onto the cardstock and you could add a strip of decorative you know designer series paper to the inside to just make it look prettier if you want so you you know you don't have to add another layer just so you know but didn't that come together pretty quickly so nice all right I'll put this aside let's see clean up a little bit and maybe we can tackle the other card that I made. So this is the other card that I made and let's see, this one was made with the Honeybee Home stamp set um, or bundle I should say. So this um, is comes does come with uh, coordinating dies. So it has flower dies and it has the dies that go coordinate with the bees. So nice. All right, let's see. Where did I put all my supplies for that card? Here they are. I got them. I got them. Here they are. So again, using the memories and more card pack. So I'm going to use move these pieces aside for now. Put them right there. Again, we're going to use the hand penned designer series paper as our layer, right? Here goes the layer, and it's going to be cut five and a quarter by three and a quarter. 
And in this case, I cut two. You don't have to. The, the first one obviously is on the front. I cut a second piece to go on the inside, but that was just optional. It's not necessary. You can just leave it blank and then put a strip of the designer series paper along the edge. But if you wanna make it more decorative, you certainly can. But so it's up to you if you wanna just cut one or two, but obviously you need one for the front of the card. And let me move that out of the, out of the way. Okay. And then you're going to also need, as you can see, I'll move this over so you can see. Um, we're going to need a piece of basic white. Hold on, let me just do it this way. Uh, cut at two and, a, two and a half by four. And again, I put cut two because I had, no, oh, I thought I had a second piece. Oh, I cut it a little bit bigger on the inside. But if you want to put another you know, cut another piece for the sentiment on the <clears throat> on the inside. You can cut two. Um, <clears throat> just cutting one for the front for now is really all you need. Then I also just you'll need a scrap of um, Highland Heather for the back of the um, of the sentiment label, and then you'll just need a you know a scrap of white for the sentiment and you'll also need some uh, scraps to um, cut the flowers so you'll stamp the flowers you'll stamp two of these um, and then you'll there's a die in the in the bundle that you'll die cut them out so you can stamp them and die cut them and color them, or you can just stamp them, color them, and then die cut them, whatever you want to do. I already die cut them. And the way I colored them, and now you have so many choices. I'll just tell you up front. I use my coloring pencils, Stampin' Up! coloring pencils, and there's two packs. You get... Um, you get the, you know, there's two, there's two, two packs, two different packs of water and color, watercolor pencils that you can uh, order. And let's see, this one, this set, it comes with Real Red, Calypso Coral, Pumpkin Pie, Daffodil Delight, Old Olive, Bermuda Bay, Pacific Point, Rich Razzleberry, Melon Mambo, Early Espresso, Basic Gray, Basic black and you can't really see it but it, this is whisper white now this set comes with um cherry cobbler flirty flamingo cajun craze crushed curry granny apple green garden green coastal cabana balmy blue night of navy and gorgeous grape um, i love the look of the um the watercolor pencils. So this card, for this card, I used the um, Stampin' Blends. So you can use the Stampin' Blends. If that's what you have, that's what you can use. You can also use the pastel chalks if you have those. Um, but what I did is I used the Highland Heather um, Highland, did I use Highland Heather on my pencils? No, I didn't. I used Gorgeous Grape because they don't have Highland Heather. It's Gorgeous Grape, right? Let's see if I can pull them out now. Gorgeous, that's Night of Navy. Oh, here's the Gorgeous Grape right here. And then I also used uh, Coastal Cabana. So these are the two that I used. And I'll just show you. And then you can, you can, um, Color them in. I'm just going to show you. Color them in. Right? So easy. You just like, you know, a coloring book. Easy peasy. Now, it does have, you know, has some leaves on it too. So, you know, you can get a green... And, and color it in. Now keep in mind, you know, as you're coloring it in and coloring it dry, if you were to wet the 
watercolor pencil because it says watercolor pencil. You can wet the pencil and you will end up with a darker image. So, if that's what you want to do. So you can do light and dark. And I really like the way the, um, the Coastal Cabana looks as well. I'm just showing you. I like, you know, I think it has a nice um, soft look to it when you do it with the pencils. Um, and like I said, you can make them darker if you want to. It's just pretty. So here's, I just wanted to show you, but here's what they, here's what they look like finished. Um, these were the, with the watercolor pencils, right? Versus the, this one I did with the, both of them, I did both of them with the Stampin' Blends, right? So you can see it's a little bit, these are a little bit um, darker and these are a little bit lighter. I don't know, I just like the way the watercolor pencils ones came out. Okay. So I have those done and then, oh, what did I do with my butter, with my bumblebee? Naturally I was, oh, here he is. Then you'll need to stamp out the bumblebee image, right? You can see him right here. There he is. Um, and I colored him in just with a little bit of Daffodil Delight. I didn't need to do much more than that. And now there's a couple of, well, there's three butterfly, I mean, but a bumblebee images in this stamp set. There's one, two, and three. And this is the one that I used because I wanted it to be fluttering around the flower, onto the flower. So that's the one that you'll stamp and it has a coordinating die. So you just want to punch them out. to the side all right we can take our card and give it a fold so for this card I did not pop it up on a dimensional I just glued it down onto the onto the card base look at how pretty this back of it is I would have used this one but it doesn't really how to coordinate with it, but this side does. All right. And it does look like a, a bumblebee butterfly garden. Okay, now if you wanted to, you could do what we did with this other card with the with the the Easter card and you know give it a color wash with your blender brushes but for this one um I just kept it white and again I'm just going to glue it down So for the flowers, I am going to put a few uh, dimensionals on it. I will pop it up a little bit. So you can use either the, um, the large dimensionals or if you have the small ones, you can use those too. Do the same thing with this one. Oops. All 
All right, so this one I'm gonna put kind of at an angle because they're the exact same flowers. I mean, you could put them up one, you know, a little bit lower or a little bit higher. I'm just gonna put it at an angle. Okay, and I'm going to just, um, I think I'm gonna use a couple of small dimensionals on the back of the bee, because it's not a very big image. And I think if I use the large dimensional, it might hang off the side and you might be able to see it. Okay, so we'll just peel off the back. And place it so it looks like he's landing on the flower. Okay. All right. So then I have... See, do I have the same one? Yeah. Okay. It's uh, the sentiment I used was, you're the nicest. Highland Heather ink. Ugh. Okay, so that I'm gonna turn that's the beauty. You can turn it over if you get too much ink on it. Let's see how this works. That didn't work either. Okay, let's get another piece. <laughs> How many times has that happened to you? Gosh, I hate that. It happens to me all the time. Okay. So it's a little crooked, but I'm gonna cut it with the um, paper trimmer. So it won't really matter. Let me just grab my paper trimmer. Okay. All right. And do is I'm going to, I don't know how anybody else does it, but this is how I do it. All right, I'm going to glue it down on my paper first. This is one way. I just do it all. I do this in any number of ways. I have a pre-sized, pre um, I know how much I need to cut the paper, or if I haven't done that, I just glue it down on the paper and then trim around it. I don't know how you do it. I don't think there's any wrong way. Maybe snip a tiny bit more off. Okay. That came out nice. Now, yeah, I get the card. And this is, I'm just going to put some dimensionals on the back. I'm going to use the larger dimensionals. OK, 
Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to put it across the center. Uh, my cat is marching around around me and getting into a paper bag and they kind of make a noise around me. If you can hear thumping, it's him jumping down from the perch onto the floor and then trying to get into a paper bag. <laughs> okay, and then I have these um, loose... Okay, kitty, you can go now. I have some loose flower flourishes. These, I'll show you what they look like. Uh, they're in um, pale papaya, fresh freesia, and polished pink, which are the in colors. Okay, and I'm going to put a tiny bit of glue on the back. Oops, sorry, I keep moving my, my uh, camera. Putting one right there. And then I'm going to take a small one. I can, it's so tiny, it's hard to hold on to. <laughs> I got it. All right, and then lastly, I have these bumblebee trinkets, which are in the catalog. They're in the mini catalog. Oh, they're so cute. So I'm gonna add a bumblebee trinket to the card. place a little bit. There we go. And there you have it. Done. And all made easy by the memories and more cards and envelopes. So fantastic. I highly recommend it. Like I said, you get 20 cards, 20 envelopes for $10. And the other Memories and More kit, card kit, comes with actually 50 um, cards and envelopes. Uh, but they're the note card size. But you would get 50. Plus, you would get some punch-out sentiments. Plus, you would get stickers. Again, for $10. I mean, how can you go wrong with that? It's such a great deal. So I just want to say thank you for tuning in and watching um, my video for today. I do have some other ones planned for the next few days. I just have to get it together, get everything together, and then post it. So I just want to thank you again uh, from Silver Lady Stamping. And I hope you enjoyed it. And please join me again. Thank you.